84, big year. Uh, but looking back to 1984 in the world of horror, on the surface, there are some amazing films that become franchises that are still relevant 40 years later. The Nightmare on Elm Street franchise was launched in 84, as well as Gremlins, Ghostbusters, Terminator, The Toxic Avenger, Children of the Corn. Oh, that's a franchise. Maybe not one people enjoy, but it's a franchise. And I'll really mix it up and say Red Dawn. Can't wait to see what the guys have to say about that, because I think Red Dawn's a horror movie. The advent of the home video cassette recorder allowed people for the first time to be able to watch movies of their own choosing at home. Hollywood's fear of losing box office ticket money caused them to make the price of a video cassette extremely expensive. Regardless of the price, the appetite for watching videos at home was insatiable. So to fill that need, a video rental market blossomed. With the major studios sitting this one out early on, independent filmmakers began to fill the public's appetite for home videos with low-budget horror films. Historically, horror is cheap to make. And after the success of films like Halloween and Friday the 13th, horror had a formula to follow for financial success. You could make a film with all the popular tropes. The success of Halloween and the like in the 70s showed that you didn't need to big name bankable stars. So hire some affordable and hungry unnamed actors and you could bypass attempting to show the film in the theaters and release your film straight to video. With the price of video cassettes between $39 and $99 and thousands of video rental stores looking for movies to fill shelves, these independent studios were able to line their pockets during this home video boom. But many of the movies made weren't that good. An oversaturation of the slasher genre in theaters and the massive backlash of Silent Night, Deadly Night, where suburban mothers protested the movie's poster showing Santa going down the chimney with an axe, signaled to the major studios and the indies alike that the slasher genre had gone too far. However, 1984 also witnessed a revitalization with the genre within the genre with films like A Nightmare on Elm Street that introduced innovative elements that breathe a new life into the slasher formula, science fiction and horror films from the independent straight to video producers to small studios showing in theaters got a boost with the psychological terror of Nightmare on Elm Street. This would mark a new era for the slasher genre. 1984 marks a curious time of a duality of decline and rebirth. 1984 highlights a transformative period in horror, reflecting the genre's capacity for reinvention and its enduring appeal. So, much like Marty McFly's quest to save his family from erasure, tonight with this A-team of movie fanatics, we will go back to the past and attempt to save the glory of 80s schlock cinema. Please welcome the panel I'll be talking with tonight, Professor Dr. Ben Burgess and the Doctor of Love, J.G. Michael. <laughs> I like that you're wearing a uh, Iron Maiden shirt. This Power Slave also came out in 1984. That it did. And if you have the playlist that we make for all of these music shows, then you know that uh, songs from Power Slave are on that playlist. I'm also making a playlist for 1967. Uh, a lot of psychedelic music that is quite self-indulgent. Comes out in 1967. My sure. fucking God. Um, I started the show off with my opening monologue where I call Red Dawn a horror film. For a seven year old me, there was nothing more frightening than a world war fought right in front of me. Do you guys consider this late Cold War film horror? I'll start off with you, JG. I mean, I consider Robocop horror in some ways, so I have to uh, consider Red Ooh. Dawn a horror. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Think about the gore in, in, in movies like RoboCop. I mean, Red Dawn, yeah. I'd... You call it a horror film? Ben? Uh, yeah, because the Russians lose. <laughs> <laughs> Did not see that one coming. <laughs> you you would have you cheered it on when they when they uh, rappel down from the planes. <laughs> and uh, the teacher's like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> And you'd have been like, oh shit, fuck yeah, no school tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, you know, omelets, eggs, what do you want? Uh, <laughs> no, I, I don't. Uh, I guess, I guess, outside of the 
you know, the horrifying victory of American imperialism at the end. I, um, otherwise, yeah, I would not, I guess, consider Red Dawn to be a horror film exactly. Although I think RoboCop is actually like a pretty solid, I mean, I, I know it's not 1984, but I think there's like a, you know, since it was mentioned, I think there's like a solid case there. That's like a genuinely, you know, creepy premise, right? Like uh, the thing at the beginning of like RoboCop 2 where uh, it's like, oh, you got to stop visiting your family. They, you know, you're not that person anymore. You know, that's uh, that's a, like, that's a huge, some human being who used to exist. That's not you. It's like, oh, okay, that's that's actually genuinely like unsettling. And, and that, that feels horror movie and that almost in a sort of weird body horror way. Um, Terminator to me, I believe it is a horror movie. The f- the first one. Um, the, Anyone the, who says Terminator is not a slasher movie is wrong. Slasher movie. It's a it's a straight up slasher movie. It scared the bejesus out of me when my father rented it. I did not see the theater. I saw it on on home video. And uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was a villain to me because <laughs> Conan used to scare me a little bit too as a little kid. Um. Because there was there was some bloody films back in the day. Yeah, I mean, he certainly. I mean, it's kind of funny. You're not supposed to treat it that way, but the you know most memorable monologue in encoded is totally a villain monologue. You know, it's the uh, crush your enemies, see them driven before you, hear the weeping lamentations of their women. Like, <laughs> how is that not something that a villain would say? <laughs> and you're watching it like eight years old. You're like, yeah, dude, you would talk like that on the playground. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds bad. But- <laughs> 